in the Artonia wetland forest. The giant and lion is on the hunt. It kills the sea mouse that wanders to the forest for food. The stranger comes from the swamp, the grinder crab. The crabs care off the giant and lion and takes over its meal. After claiming its reward, the crab back to the water. It's back to the open sea grassland, the crab's home. But someone lurks in the shadow of a seagrass meadow. The crab knows that and runs, but it's too late. The shadow strikes and kills the crab in the blind of an eye. Welcome to the project Arthrogenesis. The speculative evolution sheet word Arthronia planet is a planet inhabited by ants. In the previous episode, we looked at the species from the main roof that invade the forest. Today we will discuss the creatures from the open ocean of the Arthronia planet. Planet with no fish and no other creatures that can fill the niches. The only arthropod that rules this world. It's about 20 million years past seeding in the mid protochitonian period where the diversity of the oceans is abandoned. The Arthronia planet oceans have tropical climates warmer than Earth's oceans, especially at the equator. High precipitation cause lower salinity levels. With a smaller satellite, the tidal force and current will be weaker than Earth, which could lead to more stable coastal environments and influence the distributions of heat and nutrients across the oceans. The oceans of Arthronia planet have mangrove forests in coastal area and seagrass meadow. The open oceans are wide with average deep around 3080 meter. The uppermost layer of the Arthronia ocean has great diversity well deep into the twilight zone just some day 34. The deepest and the darkest area located in a basal trench that reaches 10,000 meters deep. There was an abundance of life such as sea mouse and grinder crab. Full ground sea mouse not only live in the mangrove forest area, they also live in the seagrass meadow area. While grinder crab eat seagrass or even other creatures that live in seagrass meadow. Grinder crabs also become scavengers in the seagrass meadow and usually they explore to the open ocean sea floor as scavengers. The other creatures that live here are triops caudifolucris or called fan-tailed triops. Triops from its ancestor genus that means three-eyed. Caudifolucris, a combination of cauda, which means tail, and folucris, which means bird or flying, to suggest a fan-like tail. This triops is 8 to 10 cm in length and 4 gram weight. Fan tail triops have flattened oval shaped bodies with a slightly tapered tail. Its body is divided into several segments. It is protected by a hard chitinous exoskeleton with a broad carapace at the front end and a long slender abdomen equipped with two long antennae and a pair of large compound eyes. The mouth parts are adapted for filter feeding and have huge mouths featuring fine comb-like structure that helps drain algae and small particles from the water. The limbs are segmented, with the front limbs being longer and more robust, aiding in swimming and foraging. The tail is fan-like, aiding in propulsion through the water. They are highly social species, living in large shoals that swim in synchrony. This collective movement confuses predators and increases the chance of individual survival. During feeding, they often swim near the surface, where sunlight is abundant and algae growth is most prolific. The shoals are known to migrate seasonally 
following algae blooms to maximize their food intake. In addition to filter feeding, they play a crucial role in the ecosystem by consuming detritus and helping maintain water quality. Ventile triops also become one of the food sources of ocean predators such as grinder crab. Ventile triops live in a soil and have movement behavior that is very hard to catch. So grinder crab usually waits and bush in the sand or sea grass area and catch them using its pincers. They also become a food source for the hunter butterfly that catch them while they are on the surface of the water, especially their juvenile in the seagrass meadow, using its spiked forelimbs and needle-like rostrum that can use to catch and stab the triops and bring its prey to their tree to feast. But not only them feel the diversity of the oceans, meet Anomalo mantis cyripteros. Anomalo derived from the Greek word anomalos, meaning irregular or unusual, referring to the unique anomalo curious like body structure. Mantis, inspired by the mantis rim, known for its aggressive predatory behavior. Cyripteros, combining cyriptes means sawyer and teron means wings or limb. It describes the saw like rostrum and a large spike for limb. It is 1.2 meter in length and 35 kilogram in weight. Anomalo mantis features a segmented elongated body reminiscent of but mantis rim and an anomalo carries. Its body is streamlined, allowing it to move swiftly through water with a flexible exoskeleton that over both protection and mobility. The most striking feature is its soul like rostrum, a rigid, blade like projection extending from its head. This rostrum is serrated with sharp, backward facing teeth capable of slicing through the tough exoskeleton of prey. The creature's forelimbs are large, powerful, and covered in spikes. Its limbs has a series of enlarged spiked segments that can be used to grasp, pierce, and immobilize prey. A normal mantis possess compound eyes on stalks, giving it a wide field of view. The eyes are highly developed, capable of detecting even the slightest movement in dim light, a crucial adaptation for hunting in murky water. Anomalo mantis is an ambushed predator lying in wait within the dense foliage of a seagrass meadow or mangrove. It uses its soul like rostrum to slash an unsuspecting prey, often delivering a single, devastating strike. Its spike forelimbs then secure the prey. As an apex predator of the ozones, anomalo mantis hunt on anything that lives in the seagrass meadow and the open oceans. The main prey of the Anomalomantis is a shell of fantile triops where the Anomalomantis use a saw like rostrum like a sword and use its forelimb just like a mantis attack its prey. Anomalomantis usually goes to shallow water in the seagrass meadow to hunt simos. Simos are an easy meal for the Anomalomantis because they only rely on swimming away or hiding in the dense seagrass, while anomalo mantis speed and detection are better than sea mouse. Anomalo mantis also hunt on the grinder crab. Grinder crab's formidable armor and pinchers that can dominate other predators on the land, now in the oceans. The grinder crab just become a meal for the anomalo mantis. Anomalo mantis forelimb can easily immobilize the crab well, a saw like rostrum can break the crab's armor. Anomalo mantis is symbiotic with green algae species that grow on its exoskeleton. These algae provide camouflage. In return, algae benefit from the nutrients in the water as the anomalo mantis moves. On the seafloor of the Arturnia planet, open ocean is filled by bioluminescence amphiphot. For the streets abysses, 
Voodoo streets is derived from foot, that means like, and streets derived from stratos, meaning layer or shoulder. The genus name for the stratus suggests a creature that inhabits the deep layers of the oceans where the light is scarce, but it can produce its light possibly in layers or patterns. Abyssus comes from the Latin abyssus meaning abyss or bottomless pit which directly refers to the deep sea habitat of this species. Have 10 cm length and 35 gram weight. For the stress abyssus is a small bioluminescent amphibot with a translucent exoskeleton that emits a soft blue-green glue. Its body is slightly flattened laterally, making it streamlined for navigating the dense, cold water of Arturnia ozen floors. The amphiphot has elongated antenna equipped with sensitive chemoreceptors to detect organic matter. Its appendages are adapted for bird crawling along the seafloor and swimming, with specialized spiny structure that help it grab on detritus. The amphiphot eyes are large and adapted to low lights and environment, providing excellent vision in the dark deep. A series of photophores, small like producing organs, are scattered along its body, primarily concentrated on the dorsal side and near the tips of the appendage. These photophores can be controlled to emit like form communications mating displays or to startle potential predators. They primarily feed on detritus, scavenging the seafloor for decaying organic materials. It plays a vital role in the ecosystem by recycling nutrients back into the environment. The amphiphot move in small groups, its individual emitting a synchronized glow to ward off predators or to signal when another during feeding. When threatened, they can rapidly increase its bioluminescence, creating a flash of light that temporarily blinds or confuses predators, giving it time to escape. Since the early to mid protochitonian period, Arturniosans in balance between predator and prey race, from the mangrove forest to seagrass meadow, and then the open oceans. All organisms in here fill their nases of Arturni oceans just like the Earth's oceans. But in the deeps and the darkest part of the Arturni ocean, called abyssal trends, the monster inside the darkness still becomes a mystery. Thank you for watching this episode of Arturogenesis. In the next episode, we will explore the deepest and the darkest abyssal trends in the Arturnia planet. Leave me a comment if you have any thoughts on this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.